Okay, so welcome back to part two on how to set up MAME to emulate a color computer. And here we are. We've got a Coco 2 that is booted up and we're on the glorious green screen. So what's one of the first things you can do? Just the Coco. Let's go ahead and let's click on here and let's type up um, hello world. And let's type up a program and 20 go to 10 and then let's hit run and then boom here we go and right now by default the break key on my real keyboard that's being emulated to my coco happens to be my escape key my concern was and this is this was true in the past was that pressing escape would sometimes close mame out completely close out the emulated color computer completely and then you lost everything you're doing at this time that does not seem to be an issue but what about, um, well, what about the clear key? What do I press to clear the screen? Uh, in this case here, it looks like it was home. Um, but we're, I'm gonna go over how to do all that kind of stuff. And what about like the at key? So right now, for me to get the at key, it's not here, like on my normal keyboard, shift two is at, where the hell is at on my Coco keyboard? I don't know. So there are things you can do to map certain keys to, match your actual physical keyboard that you have at your hands under your fingertips and map the keys on that keyboard to represent the keys that it would have existed on a real color computer not only that but you can also map your joystick that is plugged into your computer to also work with MAME to work with your color computer so any joystick that your operating system recognizes and nowadays almost all of them are USB powered and almost all of them look similar to um, either an Xbox or PlayStation controller, although there are also a bunch of other retro style sticks you can get that look like NES controllers and Sega Genesis, all kinds of stuff. So there's a there's no shortage of game type controllers you can plug into a modern computer via USB. As long as your computer recognizes that controller, you can map the uh, different inputs and buttons of your controller of choice to work with MAME and work with your uh, virtually emulated color computer. So in order to get to some of these settings you need to be able to pull up the user interface. That key is the tab key. I'm pressing the tab key right now it's not working because by default MAME is in a kind of natural emulation where it's emulating the actual color computer key. So right now on the color computer keyboard shift 2 is quote so I'm pressing shift 2 I can see that so how do I get to that menu that's where I remapped that user interface toggle key that was defaulting to scroll lock on mine I've mapped it to caps lock and right now when I press that you're gonna see this pop-up message continue to change so when you're on full emulation which is the default it's emulating the keyboard to the best of its ability and there is no user interface when you toggle that it says partial emulation and now the user interface is available so now when I press tab this is when this comes up and this is also where I remapped the escape key out of this interface because I didn't want to accidentally shut down my Coco so I believe I remapped mine to be the end key to get out of here so there's a ton of things you can do this is where you're going to get to your file manager this is where you're going to be able to load cartridges and disks there's slot devices where you can start to get into configuring multi-pack interfaces and other things but what we want to look at here is the input for this machine and so everything we do is going to be um, saved into a configuration file for any time I boot up and emulate the color computer to in MAME moving forward these changes are going to become effective here the first thing that I want to do is I want to look at by default where all these different joystick options are here and we kind of want to clear out all the predetermined joystick options and then just um, basically um, kind of map those to what we have so right now there's a bunch of stuff for right buttons and right joysticks and left button and left joysticks and I'm just going to go down the line here and I'm actually going to clear them out by pressing the delete key and now they are gone and so now I can map this how I want to map it and that's going to depend again on your controller and your preferences what I'm going to show you real quick is that uh, I'm using a, a generic um, Xbox controller that actually has two analog um, 
sticks, a left one and a right one, and then it's got four buttons that are um, A, B, X, and Y. So for the sake of this, I'm going to map the left joystick to my left thumbstick on my controller and the right joystick to my right thumbstick, and that way I can just very quickly switch around. So for my, and because this is a Coco 1 and 2, they only had one button each per joystick. So for my right button, I'm going to map that to button B on my X pad. Now I'm going to map the X axis of the analog controller to the X axis of my right stick. So when I press enter to map that and I just move my right thumb stick to the right, that's the right stick axis. So my right joystick for my Coco is mapped to the right stick axis of my controller. I'm going to do the thing, same thing here for the Y analog. I'll hit enter to map that. I'll press up on that to get the right stick Y axis. And that's all you need to map. You just need to map the button, the X axis, and the Y axis. Don't mess around with these um, analog increment and decrement stuff. That's just going to mess things up. So just keep it simple. Map the button and the two axes based on what controller you have. I'm going to do the same thing here now for the left one. So for my left one, I'm going to do uh, button A. For my left X analog, I'm going to move my left stick and that's picking up left stick analog. And then for my Y analog, I'm gonna press up on the left stick, so that's now left stick Y analog, right? And that's it. Now this is where you can get a little bit fancy if you wanted to. If you wanted your clear key to be something different than where it is, I think on my keyboard it's actually home. It is, so clear is home, enter is enter. Right now, um, break can be one of two keys, keyboard end, or keyboard escape. You could remap that. So the tricky one might be where's the at key? Because I'm really curious about the at key. So right now for my keyboard, the at key is actually the left bracket. So you kind of need to remember that because uh, if you're trying to list out a basic program listing and you needed to pause that on the screen, it was shift at. In this case here, it would be shift left bracket. And you might want to just remap that however you want. So at this point here, I don't think I have much need to remap my break key out of escape because it's already there. So I'm going to hit just um, end to get out of there, end to get out of here. And so now I, I have a Coco. I have some keyboards mapped that I don't really need to. It's so like if I list out my program, I know now that the clear key is home. That lists it out. So we have all that going. So we've got a Coco, we've got some joysticks, we can run a program, we can break a program, we can tweak our keyboard to, um, to work how we see fit. So what's the next thing we want to do? We want to go ahead and we want to get some software and I'm going to download some software and I'm going to stick that software in the same um, folder as my MAME folder. So this is where um, L. Curtis Boyle's website is going to come into play. So if I go to L. Curtis Boyle's Color Computer Games list, and then I'm going to pick a game I know I'm allowed to use. It's Rick Adams' Temple of Rom. So I'm going to look for Temple of Rom. And so now when I go to download the Temple of Rom's disk image, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do you one better. We're going to get the latest version. So I'm going to go to templeofrom.com. And I'm going to download the latest version of Temple of Rom two's disk image. So when I go to download this, I'm going to save this not to my ROMs folder, but just to my MAME folder. I'm going to save it in my MAMES folder as a disk image, and we're going to load that. But what I will also do now is I'm going to go back to the Color Computer Archive. So we're going to go over here to Cartridges, and then I'll go to T for Temple of ROM here, and I'll get this cartridge, and I'm also going to save this as a CCC file into the root of MAME. Why am I doing all this? How is this going to affect your lives? This is where if we bring up the MAME user interface and I go to File Manager, let's say I want to load a cartridge. If I double click Cartridge, right here, Temple of ROM 1984 Tandy.CCC. So if I load, if I double click that, that should boot up the Coco with that cartridge. So at this point now, I have actually loaded a cartridge into my color computer because I went to the file manager, I went to load, I went to load cartridge. So now this is the original um, Temple of ROM cartridge by Rick Adams. So I don't know which button I need to press here. Is it A or B? 
I need to maybe click on this. Okay. Okay, one player. So this is using the left joystick. And so I've loaded the cartridge and I can move him around with my Xbox controller. I can fire my lasers and I can play the original Temple of Rum and this is loading a cartridge. Okay, so that's wonderful. So now what I want to do, all right, actually I just hit the X to close it. So in this case here, I'm going to just go ahead and, and, and relaunch Color Computer 2 and I'm going to do a similar thing. If I hit the uh, caps lock to toggle my menu, I hit tab to bring up my thing and I go to file manager. Instead of loading it as a cartridge now, I'm going to load it as a floppy disk. So if I go to floppy disk and I scroll down here to temple2.dsk and I double click that and saying do you want to do read only or read write? I'm not going to change it so I can do read only. I can now just hit the end key to back up. I've now just inserted a virtual floppy disk in a virtual floppy drive. And if I type in dir, there it is. And now I can do a load m temple. And I can do an exec. Ooh, now you see this one says Temple of Rom 2. What's new? This one's got a 2 in the title, right? So this is the um, the version 2.0.0. Yes. Copyright 2020. So yeah, there are lots of differences here by Rick Adams. And so when you fire this one up and you go to hit play, here we go. Now I am playing in Temple of Rom 2, which has a maze that is 45% bigger and more monsters. And it also has the ability for you to go to Rick Adams' website, download a uh, template for Photoshop where you can create maps and, and, and customize this to your liking. However, as a proof of concept, just showing that you can boot up a Coco and load both a cartridge and load a disk image, this is a great way to get you started on using Cocos in MAME. And there are going to be many other benefits to using MAME as well. For starters, MAME emulation is very rock solid. And, and the same is true for XROAR. And the same is mostly true for VCC. However, VCC does have some things that it can do that real hardware can't and, and vice versa. So VCC is not perfect, but it is extremely user friendly and it's really good for most of what it does. Um, but MAME is, is rock solid on its hardware emulation and MAME has got lots of advanced features like debuggers and the ability to support all kinds of extra hardware. Um, and so, and then MAME is also used quite a bit with cross assemblers and, and running like editing tools to move disk images over to emulators to test your rapid development of software and assembly and other high level languages or, or languages like C and, and God knows what else. So there's a ton of stuff you can do with MAME um, other than just playing the pre-made stuff. So a lot of it gets to be a little bit more advanced, a little bit more technical, and there's a lot of hardware you can emulate on here too. You can run drive wire on here, you name it. All right, so we've covered the basics, how to get MAME up and running, how to um, tweak the general interface options for the entire MAME emulator, how to boot up a color computer, how to fine tune some of the user interface and keyboard and joystick mappings in the color computer. And then lastly, we went ahead and we loaded up both a cartridge file and a disk file in a color computer, all using MAME emulating a color computer. So hopefully that in itself helped you if you've never used MAME before and weren't sure how to get started with MAME. What can we expect in future videos, since this is basically the kind of idiot's guide to MAME, the MAME for dummies, the MAME 101, I will do some more advanced MAME videos, some of which are things I know how to do already, some of which I don't, so I will be leaning on some of my friends to help me make sure I provide accurate and proper information in doing that. So one of the things I do know how to do is to launch MAME from a batch file. For me, because I'm in Windows, I use a batch file, and that's also equivalent to a script. You could do just manual command prompt launchings, and there's lots of things you can do by launching MAME through the command prompt, including mounting a disk. So you can have MAME already boot up with the particular disk you want already in the drive, so you can just get into your program that much quicker. MAME does support the multi-pack interface. MAME supports a lot of things you can plug into that multi-pack interface, like the Orchestra 90 and the Speech Sound cartridge, the Game Master cartridge, 
cartridge, and a plethora of other cartridges like RS-232 packs, modem packs, you name it. Um, you can load different disk ROMs in, into MAME, like HDB DOS and, and other versions of DOS. You can access DriveWire through MAME. So future videos will cover how to do these, and who knows what else they'll cover. So if there are things in particular you would like to see done or would like to know how can be done in MAME, um, reach out to us, maybe leave a comment on this video, reach out on our Coco Discord server and ask some questions. We've got an emulator channel there. We've got some really savvy people who know what they're doing with emulators. And um, I'm, I know enough to be dangerous and to get done what I need to be, have done. And hopefully I'm going to help a few other people who maybe just didn't quite know how to get started. And once you get started, I'm sure there are going to be lots of more things you want to do. And so we'll hopefully address those questions and those needs in future videos. So thank you so much for watching Coco Forever. Remember, there is no wrong way to Coco. So if you can Coco on real hardware, that's great. If you can Coco on an emulator, that's great. If you've got one of these newfangled hardware Cocos like the Matchbox or the Mister or the FPGA, whatever you got, if you're Cocoing, you're, you're, you're doing it. You're doing it right. There's no wrong way to Coco, and MAME is just one of the many ways to do that. So hopefully you're going to have doing something fun with your Coco. Check us out on Discord, discord.cocotalk.live, and let's keep that conversation going. Take care, everybody. Coco forever.